I just want to take a minute to reflect on a few aspects of my trip to Peru now that it's almost over. I'm on my way to the airport, get there tomorrow night. It's been fascinating to say the least. Some major highs, some very frustrating lows, but I have to say that it's very interesting to observe uh, the lows are relatively easy nowadays, but they still feel terrible <laughs> for a short while. I know I've got a lot to learn, including how to operate this camera so it doesn't shake so much. This is my first time using the selfie stick with the movie. Anyway, I'm in a particularly beautiful spot. I don't know how much you can see. The jungle. My last, my last hours with the jungle that I didn't think I'd even see this trip. I thought there was going to be a mountain trip. But I'm in the jungle mountains. <laughs> the nice river behind me. So at one of the truly fascinating events was I, I don't even know where to begin to try to explain this, but shortly before I came to Peru while I was still in Spain, out of the blue, I suddenly got really, really angry at a friend who wasn't a friend anymore. I haven't spoken to him in probably three years. And when I say speak, that's kind of a stretch because he and I mostly had a text relationship and really seen each other very much in person. But he was somebody who had a huge influence on my life, to say the least. Um, and there was one day I was texting my daughter, because she's in California, um, when she was having a hard time with how things are going to turn out. Uh, we were trying to make plans and she was in this negative mode of nothing's ever going to work, it's all shit and etc. And I was trying to figure out what kind of guidance to give her. And and for some reason it came to mind all the love and light language the typical New Age Californians speak that this ex-friend of mine really spoke. He spoke of, of love and dreaming and play and not, not in a interpersonal romance way, but a romantic about life way. And um, I had learned that his methods, his teachings were not quite right. <sighs> Caused me a lot of pain. And so, and, and I probably had passed some of that on to my daughter those years ago and now I was regretting it and I was trying to find this way of navigating it with her of not being too airy-fairy and not wallowing in the negative positive thinking without bypassing positive thinking if you know what I mean and for some reason this just ignited this rage, this huge 
huge rage and I took it out on this ex-friend of mine. <laughs> it was the strangest thing. Um, I don't often get mad, but when I get mad I can get pretty mean. I haven't learned how to communicate very well yet in those realms. But it, it started something rolling and at that same time, somewhere around at that same time, I was trying to make plans of where to go next in Europe. My Schengen visa was running out and there were still Schengen countries I wanted to go to. But I, nothing, nothing was feeling right. And then there were other countries that I wanted to go to and the weather was terrible. It was snowing in Croatia. I just was in, I was so sick of being cold. I was in no mood to go where it was snowing in the spring and just like done and um, raining in Morocco and not enough time in Greece and I was feeling so jittery and this this went on for a while. I, I took a friend to the airport in Portugal and just kept driving through Portugal and as as this, this, this uh, jitteriness in me and this rage at my friend and the whole New Age community and love and light community was raging in me. I was driving through Portugal and the storms were raging and the storms got stronger and my rage and anger got stronger and I was in such a bad mood. I was having trouble really enjoying where I was. And, but I was noticing where I was going too. I ended up at the farthest west point of the European continent and the farthest southwest tip of Portugal on the continent. And um, driving all along the coast and on these cliffs and the storms were raging the whole week I was there and in fact there are these waves that were 42 meters which is over a hundred feet it was I, I mean I'm up on these huge cliffs and I could see them a mile away and they looked huge from where I was they, they were ginormous and um, I was paying attention to the inner and outer reflections and by the end of my Portugal trip I was starting to calm down a little bit with the anger and the storm was calming down as well and then um, but I was still discomfort with where I was on the planet and just trying to get across the southern coast of Portugal and oh my gosh my body wanted out of Portugal so badly <sighs> I could not get out of there fast enough not that I disliked Portugal it has some really nice places but I swear to you there, there's a bridge over a river that divides Portugal from Spain and as I crossed the political border that ran through the bridge I felt the shivers, the shakes, the jitters go through my body. <laughs> that was amazing and I felt so much better once I was in Spain, which makes no sense. Because it's not like Spain's any better than Portugal. I don't know what's going on there. Other stories to deal with those two countries for another time. But anyway, as I'm on the southern coast of Spain. I still don't know where I want to go. I just keep driving and lo and behold I end up back in Tarifa, the place where I started my European trip, which is the southernmost point of the European continent at exactly 36.000 Zero four zeros degrees latitude. More on that at another time. Very special place. It's quite a vortex there. Um, 
ended up back at that same hostel, the melting pot. And oh, I was sick of feeling discombobulated about where to go to next. So I thought, hey, I'll, I'll ask Angelica for a session. She helped me a couple years ago. And oh, out of the blue, she happens to make time to talk to me on the phone. And as soon as I contacted her, and as soon as we got on the phone and started talking, we both had the intuition that I should go visit her. And so that night I bought my plane ticket and uh, two days later, I was in Lima. Landed right smack in more of the love and light nonsense. It was pretty trippy. <laughs> so I continued. My, you know, my first week at my friend's house, I was still in the rage at my friend, and there was one day, wow, the storm outside, the, the clouds and the rain and the thunder, it was growing as my rage was growing, and I was, I was so mad. There was a part of me that wanted to curse this man's lifetimes. <laughs> lifetimes. And there was a part of me that knew I could do it. There was a part of me that knows how to do that. And I could feel it coming in. And I'm like, whoa, 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 no. I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna do this to anybody but the storm outside is getting bigger and bigger and the storm in me is getting bigger and bigger. And I'm like, oh, 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 no. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I did manage to control myself, to not curse this person, thank goodness. Um, and then as I started to cry, the rain came, just downpours. What an incredible mirror that was. Um, after a few days at my friend's house, there was someone else in the house that I did not get along with. Nice person, but to me, crazy. And uh, doing inappropriate, unhealthy things with other people. And I'm not going to get into any more details, but it was crossing the line. As far as I was concerned, and um, because I was so mad at my friend, my ex-friend, my current friend, assumed that I was just projecting and suggested that I stick around and be open to having a new response from this person I was uncomfortable with. And, um, I know I have trouble with people, and I know I need to learn how to get along with people, so I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. And I tried way too freaking long, as usual. I took another person coming into the house who really pissed me off to finally get me out of there. And the timing was interesting, because I uh, started having sessions with two other people, uh, a multifaceted psychotherapist, not strictly Western therapy, definitely not strictly Western therapy, um, and a womb healer, another woman who was a womb healer, who happened to live right next to each other. And I got a big lesson, download, healing about my emotions are my sacred guides, and I wanted to tattoo it onto my hand, but that didn't quite work out yet. <laughs> um, yeah, so I wasn't honoring my own inner wisdom through my emotions that my emotions were telling me. Hopefully that's a good lesson. 
and that I will maintain. And I'm a little, uh, the camera's a little jittery now because I've got little tiny bugs biting me. Imagine that! I'm in the jungle talking about being irritated. <laughs> um, so I went on my own. I went on my merry way and other things happened. Some really epic cool things. My birthday. <laughs> no. Highlight of my life. And then I end up in Oxapampa in the jungle. About an hour up the road from here. First day there was kind of a disaster. You know, relatively speaking. <laughs> the easy life kind of disaster where, you know, the room wasn't quite what it was supposed to be and I got mad at one of the moto drivers and this, that, and the other thing. Ooh, nothing terrible. Um, and then the next day, I felt much better and other things were going really well. Got a restaurant to cook my food my way. Phew. And then in walks this man who befriends me. At first I think he's pretty interesting. He lives in a he lives in a village nearby of uh, Yanesha indigenous people. And he says he has a farm. He talks about permaculture and social change and these really interesting things and invites me to come to the village to meet the elders and the council and see how the village works. And I'm like, yes please. Because I'm the one thing I'm really impressed with Oxapampa is how nice it is. It's not full of trash. The moto taxi drivers are still a little bit crazy, but not like everywhere else I run into them. The streets are wide. The houses are not run down. They're actually completed. And what's really interesting is that this town was founded by Germans a hundred something years ago. So it's got a very European influence. So I can sound like a racist or something, but I'm just happy the place was clean and people cared about taking care of the place. Um, and if, it's, if it took the German influence, whatever it takes, fine with me. Um, So I went with this new friend to go visit the village and he lures me with all kinds of talk about his property and collecting some San Pedro and other things and I don't remember if it was a few hours into it or the next day I start to notice this man looks so much like that man I was so angry at in Spain at, and at the beginning of my trip. I mean, they looked so alike. They could be brothers, both Italians. Wore their hair the same way. Had strange ways of, well, I shouldn't say strange, but particular ways of holding their fingers that were the same that I don't see anybody else do. It was trippy. And this new friend turned out to be, let's just say, misleading. <laughs> and actually downright dishonest. He told me he had a cave on his property that had a good view that was great for meditating on and lured me up there. It turns out it's not even on his property, not his cave, and it's full of trash. And there was more to that story. I got really angry. So I thought it was just phenomenal how basically another fractal manifestation of a similar archetype. I mean, their personalities were different, but they had a lot of things in common besides how they looked. Um, 
This new guy had the farm that he didn't have the right skills or tools and he was isolated by himself, wanting to build community all by himself and trying to lure friends there and it's not working. And the man from that I was mad at earlier, my ex-friend from a few years ago, he was the same way, only he's doing it with a boat instead of a farm. As the boat he doesn't know how to take care of or sail or repair or and can't afford it and has a great deal of trouble getting community to help him. That's kind of what the, the second part of what set me off lashing out at him is that I uh, went on his Facebook and saw him saying the same crap five and a half years later that didn't work before and he's still pulling it again and I was so angry. So they both have that in common of not really understanding themselves or what community is and trying to do things beyond their abilities and making claims beyond their abilities. Kind of a pet peeve of mine. And um, it's just fascinating how life, universe, reality, whatever you want to call it, can create such similar situations out of two different people. Yeah, are they really? You know, who's who? Are we really different people? That was one of the topics of conversation with this new friend, even you know, that there's a, there's a way in which we're not as individual as we think we are. We're parts of the same soul or projections of a fractal or fracture group souls, however you want to call it. And interestingly, this new guy and the, uh, the person who, um, person here who made me mad, both recognized me my energy, my personality, something about me in friends of theirs as well. So there's all this mirroring going on. Hey, I recognize you, similar to a friend of mine. Yeah, going all around. So... Well, this new friend I, I extracted myself from I, I did yell at him twice, once when he was, when he had lied to me basically about his property and how he was treating the plants and it became clear he didn't know what he was doing and when I said something nicely he just ignored me and talked over me and kept going until I got angry and it took shouting for him to pay attention but he still didn't really pay attention and then um, the last time I saw him, he was just talking and stop and wouldn't stop talking, wouldn't stop talking the same BS, even though I was trying to give him an out to let it settle until, and I was driving. I was driving him and all his stuff, his heavy stuff in from town. I was doing him a big favor and he wouldn't shut up until I had to stop the car and I would have kicked him out, but I had all his heavy stuff in my car, so I just asked him to be quiet for the rest of the trip. He was, thank goodness. And that was, that was the end of that. I was pretty mad for the next day. But nothing like having another project to give my mind something to think about, to relieve myself of all things I wish I knew how to say to people and all the control I wish I had over people. Let that all go. Just, I mean, I certainly have compassion for this person. He's trying really hard, and I can see how wounded he is. And I appreciated the way he was uh, honest with me about his own rage and anger and troubled life. He just he couldn't stop talking. He couldn't stop lying. Just anyway. 
really interesting way the universe brought me something to work with. And that's enough for this video. Gosh, that was 25 minutes. Wow. Thanks for watching and listening. Let's see if I do more of this in the future. There's more to the stories. Aloha.